Hello guys, welcome to study algorithms and today's problem is finding the single non-repeating element in an array. First, I'm going to describe the problem statement and show you some sample test cases. Next, we will understand how to go about solving the problem and what issues you may find while working through it. Then I will compare the code side by side and do a dry run to show you how this exactly works. So let us dive into the problem. Let's say you're given an array of integers that has odd number of elements. The special thing about this array is that all the elements are occurring twice except one. We need to find that number in the minimum amount of time possible. So given this example, we need to return 4 as the result. So as you can see, the number 1 occurs twice, the number 2 is occurring twice, and the number 3 is occurring twice. So for this example, the answer would be 4. Let us have a look at two more sample test cases. So if you see example number two, we have three that is occurring twice, four is occurring twice, nine is occurring twice, and then eight is occurring twice. So the answer for this case would be seven. In the last case that we have to see, four is occurring twice, one is occurring twice, and in this case, our answer would be two. So let's see, how are we going to solve this problem? There can be several ways to approach this problem. A good rule of thumb is to have a working solution first and then try to optimize it. So let us start with the most naive method that we can think of. Let us say that you have this case. So what you can do is you can start from the first element and then scan throughout the array if you can find this element again. So if you're starting with the element one, you look through the entire array and you find it over here. That means this is not your answer. Next, you would start at number two. You scan through this array and you find this element over here. That means this is still not on you, not your answer. Next, you need to start with number four and then you scan again and you find this element over here. Now this is again not your answer. Once you reach the fifth element, that is number seven, you scan the array from the beginning and you see that this element does not occur from the starting till the end. In this case, your answer should be seven. But as you can see, this problem has a very weak point. If your number that exists only once is present on the very end, as you can see on the right, then you are wasting a lot of time while scanning through the entire process. Let's say if you were to approach this problem with this method, so what you would end up doing is like you start at two, and then you come here, you see, oh, that's not my answer. Then you start at three, you come over here and you see, oh, that's not again my answer. You go at one and then you see, oh, this is not again my answer. So you have to wait till the very end, till you reach the last element. And then you would see that, oh, okay, this is my answer. So this approach is wasting a lot of time. And by wasting time, I mean, your complexity turns out to be order of n squared. Let us look at a better approach of solving this problem. What if we create a table that stores the frequency of each element? So let us say you are given this array and we create a map that is storing the number and the frequency of each of the element. So what you can do is you can start iterating the array from the beginning and go all the way up to the end and just count the number of times when a number is occurring. So let us go through this method on a case by case basis. So you get the number two, and its frequency is one. You get the number three, and its frequency is one. Number four, one, then you get two again. So now you would update this frequency to, you get number nine, and its frequency is again one. You get number three, so you would be updating this frequency to two. You get number four, you're updating this frequency to two. Then you get five, its frequency is one, and then you get a five again, so you update this frequency to two. Once you are done with this, just scan through this entire hash map and see which number has the frequency of one. So as you can see, the number nine has a frequency of one. And hence, this would be your answer. In this approach takes up order of n extra space, but as you can see, the time complexity is also order of n. So it's still better than the previous approach. Luckily, there is one more approach to solve this problem. This requires some basic knowledge of bitwise operators. Check the link in the description below to know more about bitwise operators that can come in handy. 
Some of the properties of bitwise operators that we that we would be using are basically a var a equals to zero and a var zero equals to a. These are the two basic properties of a var operator. You must also know that the var operator is commutative, which means to say that a var b var c would give you the same result as a var c var b. Now let us try to use these properties to solve our problem. Let us take two examples. So in the example on the left, you can see that I have an array that has the elements 1, 1 and 2. Now what if you just var all the elements with one another? When you try to var all of them, so 1 var 1 would give you 0 and then 0 var 2 would give you 2. In this case, 2 is our answer and we can just return it. Now this method would work even if there are more than 3, three elements in the array. Let us take another example that has 5 elements. So in this case, when you would go about varing the elements, you would get 1 var 2 equals to something. Now you don't have to worry about what this something is because when you go forward you get 1 var 2 var 1 again and as per the commutative law this can translate back to 1 var 1 var 2. Now this translates to 0 so 0 var 2 would translate to 2 and hence we Till here we are at 2. You go ahead 2 var 2 would be again 0 and then going forward 0 var 4 equals to 4. And again you can see 4 is our answer. Let us try to do a dry run of this code side by side with an example. So let us say I have this example array and we can see the code on the right. So I'm writing a function and in this function, I assign this variable sing, that is for single, and it would store a result. So right now, I just randomly allocate it to the first element of the array, and that is 1. So what we are doing next is, we are starting a loop for all the elements, and we start from the element that we haven't read yet, and that is number 2. What we would be doing is, we would var the elements with the previous result, to get the new element. So our end result would look something like 1 var of 2 var of 1 var of 4 var of 4. By the commutative law, you know that 1 and 1 would var out to 0 and then again 4 and 4 would var out to 0 and you only have left number 2 and hence your answer would be 2. And this is stored in our variables sing, what we are returning. Thank you. You can find the link to this problem in the video description below and please feel free to reach out to me in case of any doubts.